All right, welcome back everyone. We have 4.1 image processing. We are gonna be working on taking images, making changes to them, or even creating images from scratch. Okay, now what are you gonna learn in this lesson? So you're gonna learn, first we're actually gonna do just a little bit of image, you know, type research and what, what images are, uh, what they really are, and, and how compression can, can make them really difficult to work with. And then we're gonna focus on some basic image writing. So just super basic, you know, here we're just gonna create small images programmatically. And then we're going to apply filters to images. So we're gonna take an image, you know, copy over all of its information, make edits to it and save it into a new file. And then you're gonna get kind of a mini lab. And a mini lab is just a little bit more tough than a quick code, uh, but a little bit smaller than a lab, okay? All right, so first we gotta start off with our research and we're actually gonna head over to Wikipedia in a second here. Um, and so let's first talk about these two types of compression. So there's lossless compression, which is compression that can be reversed with no data loss, okay? Um, and so it gets you know compressed from maybe something that's five megabytes down to something, let's say that's 500 kilobytes. And then when it gets to the you know target computer or wherever it's supposed to go and it needs to open it, it can uncompress it, which kind of brings it back to this file size, but you know it um, is a perfect translation. So whatever it was before it was compressed is what it is after it was compressed. Now lossy compression is compression that loses data when uncompressed, okay? Um, and, and I'm putting the stipulation that many times it's data that didn't matter, okay? And what that means is, is maybe there's, you know, colors that people can't see, right? Or, you know, maybe when an image is 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels, you know, if we just kind of maybe, I don't know, mess with the color of some of those pixels, the image will still look the same to the user. Um, and, and a good example is, is uh, audio, um, audio types, when they're compressed, sometimes we sit there and go, there's a whole range of information in here for levels of audios that the human ear can't even hear because it's so low. But that data is in our audio because the microphone picked it up. So, you know, we sit there and so why don't we just delete those and get rid of that data, okay? Now, before we talk about anything else, I wanna talk about why this is so important. When you have a you know, website, let's say your YouTube, you know, all your information is on servers and it has to go from the server to the user. And every time you're using power, that costs money. Now YouTube's owned by Google, they probably get special rates at the Google data centers. But if you're an average you know, user who's not YouTube, you know, if you send the full image size, you're getting charged 10 times what you could because this is 10 times bigger than this, right? So you really don't want to you know, send uncompressed things. It takes more server, it allows you to have less users at the same time, all around just a bad idea, okay? Now, raw images, we think really just, you know, it would be the binary code, but I'm, I'm kind of interpreting that today is that, you know, just the RGB values, okay? When you look at a PNG file uh, and you look at it compressed, it's very difficult to tell by looking at the data, what's actually happening, because everything's compressed into special symbols, right? We are gonna be editing images by RGB value, okay? Because it'll be much easier for us to see how it actually changes. And we're not gonna be doing this with external libraries. So external libraries would normally be needed to convert something from a PNG because that, those types of compressions are very, very difficult. Uh, you could do it from scratch, but it's, it would be very hard, <laughs> very, very, very hard. Um, so what I'm getting at here is that, you know, we are gonna do this manually without ourselves with simple image types, which is this PPM image type. So let's actually go do some research, see what that is. All right, so here we are on Wikipedia. We are gonna do some research about our file type. So the one we're gonna be using is PPM, okay? Which you can see right here, stands for Portable PixMap Format because we're, we're really able to look at each pixel and it kind of is mapped out the same exact way in the file. Now there's six different types of them. We're gonna be using the P3, okay? The P3 is gonna be really easy to use um, and it, it's just gonna have plain text and RGB values, right? Because this is P1, it is just using zeros and ones, right? Which 
not enough for us, okay? So if I scroll down, here's the P3, okay? And this is everything that you put in your file. Well, we obviously are gonna do bigger images than this, but you have the header up top here, okay? Which is just basic information. So we need to specify that this is a P3 file instead of a P2 or a P1. We need to give it the width and the height. So it's a three by two. And then the maximum RGB value for each color, which can go higher than 255. We're gonna keep it at 255, okay? And then you look, here's your first pixel, 25500. So red, green, blue. So that's all red, you can see boom, red. Then there's green, and then there's blue, and then there's yellow, and then there's white, and then there's black, okay? We're gonna do it this way because it's easier for us to think about our program and the colors that we want in our image and you know being able to look at the raw code while we're learning the basics of manipulating images. Now, if you think about this, this is not compressed, okay? Which means our file sizes are gonna be massive, all right? And that's okay for now for, for a beginner, okay? Let's take a peek at some other types. So I'm gonna do JPEG, okay? And when I look at JPEG, it is a lossy compression, so it does lose data when uncompressed. But just, you know, not even like digging that hard, let's just go down and look at some of the things that we see in this article. Discrete cosine transformation, okay? We have, what do we got here? Wow, the DCT transform an eight by eight block of input values to a linear combination of these 64 patterns. Quanti <laughs> quantization, entropy coding, right? Compression ratio and artifacts. Like when you, when you think about decoding, yeah, okay. So, you know, we see some, some crazy formulas here, right? What I'm getting at here is obviously we would not use a PPM file in real practice, but to get our feet wet with image programming, it's a really, really good start because then we can think of it in terms of RGB values instead of having to deal with the compression. Now, there are plenty of abstractions that would help us deal with those compression, but I feel like for learning sometimes those get in the way because then you're just calling someone else's functions, you know, compress or add this filter, and you're not learning how to be that person to add a new function, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Now let's kind of get back to our stuff here um, and let's see what, how we're gonna do this. Ah, my mouse is dry. Okay, so oh, we are at our basic, basic stuff here, right? We kind of already talked a little bit about this, right? So every image has a header file that tells you information about how that file should be processed, right? We're gonna be using P3. We're gonna probably start with a 250 by 250 and using colors up to 255, okay? And then right after that, we're going right into our body and we're gonna put a new line after every single RGB value. This is not required. You could just simply have it all on one line, but um, for our visualization, right? Cause I want you to see the changes. It'll be really easy to track each individual pixel when we just open up the file, you know, regularly, okay? Now we're gonna create two images. We're gonna do one with a pattern and then we're gonna do one without a pattern, okay? And we're gonna do this all just programmatically, okay? All right, let's do a live code. Okay, so we have a basic file here, the normal stuff that we would work with. Now, an image is really just a file. So we're gonna add, include, fstream to this, okay? Because we need to be able to read and write to images, okay? And we're, we're not gonna open with a, an image that already exists, we're gonna create our own, all right? So I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna write, so we need off stream, not if, and I'm just gonna go off stream image, just like we would for a regular file. And then I'm gonna go image.open. We're just gonna call this image.ppm, okay? Now, if the image dot is open, Okay, which we did all of this in the previous lesson on file input and output. So if you, you know, forget all about that, you need to go watch that video. Okay, uh, it'll definitely make this much more clear. All right, so we have our image, we've opened it, and we've checked if it's open. It's open. 
So let's place header info. Okay. So, oops, we're going to go image and we're just going to write right to it. We're going to put P3. All right. Cause we're letting it know it's a P3 file, not a P1, not a P2. Okay. All right, good. Then we're going to write our width and our height to it. Okay. Now, of course we could have um, set variables for this, but we're just going to go boom and put a space. In fact, I don't even need to do it separately. You can just put a space like this. So we're going to do a 250 by 250. Okay. Now, again, I could have set variables for those, but we're just going to do, do that by hand. We're going to keep this simple. And then I need to set the RGB max, which we're going to set it at 255. Okay. So P3, 250, 250, 255. And then after all this is done, we need to, sorry, I'm used to doing with file image dot close. Let me close our file. So before I go any further, let's make sure this works. Okay. So I'm going to compile. So G plus plus main dot CPP. Good. I run it. We don't see anything, which is fine, but we have an image dot PPM here. Okay. Now, obviously if I open this, there's nothing in it. You see 15 bytes. We only wrote a little bit of data, but I can open this go to file open image.ppm. I can open this in VS code and boom, I see that text that we place right there. Okay. All right. Now let's go another step further. Okay. Now, if you think about an image in fact, let me, uh, let's open up one of the images for the next lesson. This one right here. Think of this as a coordinate plane. There is stuff in the X direction, your left and right, and there's stuff in the Y direction. Okay. We need two loops to loop kind of for an image, right? We need a loop that's going to go from left to right and place pixels. And then when it gets to the end, it's going to start over and go from left to right and place pixels over and over and over again. Okay. So we need two loops, uh, an outer loop that's going to be our Y and then an inner loop that's going to go and put all of our X values. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go for into, uh, let's use X cause this is, uh, well, this will be for Y in Y equals zero. Y is less than 250 cause that's the max size of, of our height. Right. And then we'll go Y plus plus. Okay. Now I'm doing Y on the outside because this is our outer loop. Okay. So our inner loop will go and do the whole horizontal and then our outer loop will restart it. So I'm going to go four into X equals zero. X is less than 250. X plus plus, I'm going to say Y plus plus. Okay. All right. So look, this will go and do the whole 250 horizontal. Then Y will restart and then I'll do another whole 250 horizontal. Okay. But what are we actually going to place there? Well, we're going to place a red, green, blue value. Okay. So we're going to go and write to our file. So I'm going to image and I need to write a number, but what number are we going to write? Well, for starters, let's just do the Y and X number. Okay. Um, obviously it'll change, right? But let's just do it for each of them. So we're going to go X, we're going to put a space. I'm going to do X again, put a space. I'm going to do X again, and then I'm going to end line. So the first one, it'll be zero, 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 right? And then it'll be one, 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 and then two, two, two. Okay. So we're going to be incrementing the red, the green, and the blue values at the same exact time. Whoops. Forgot that right there. Okay. Let's look good. Good, 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 good. Okay. And this actually should be good enough to get some basic colors. Let's compile this. Let's run it. All right. Let's check just our raw data. You can see that it's changed, right? We have all these RGB values. Let's actually go and open up that image and let's just see what it looks like. So it's image.ppm. It has an incorrect initial byte. Ah, you know what I did? I think this, that P that I put, the P3, I think that needs to be a capital P. So let's go back and change that to a capital P. Let me save, rerun, compile. Let's try and open it now. Boom. Okay, so look at this. So you see it. Each time it goes from black to white, black to white, black to white, black to white. Okay. Um, that's exciting. 
but let's try and do this a little bit differently. Let's just throw some random math in all of these, okay? So for this first one here, for red, instead of just doing x, I'm gonna do x times y. Now we have an issue when we do this, right? Because what if y is 249 and x is 249 and my max is supposed to be 255. So I'm gonna take a modulus of 255, right? Which is the remainder. This kind of caps this number that it can't be bigger than 255, okay? Now, that was just a change on the red. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oh, we can already see a change. Now, ooh, look at that. We can start to see different types of things arise, okay? And there's a, a, a cool kind of fractal pattern happening here, all right? Now, if we wouldn't have put this modulus and we just would have done this multiplication, I'm pretty sure that anything over 255 would just been marked as black or as unreadable, okay? And we could do all sorts of different stuff here, right? Because we only were just messing with the red. I could have done this for all the colors, right? In fact, let's do that, and then let's do it one where it's random. Let's see what happens. All right, so I save it. Run it. Not as exciting. <laughs> Not as exciting at all, because we're back to just incrementing all the colors together. And when you do that, you know, you're really just on a gray scale, right? Of moving from black to white. Uh, cause yeah, cause zero, zero, zero is all black. 255, 255, 255 is all white. And we're just moving together there, which keeps us in a gray scale. So let's introduce, mm, I don't want to introduce any minusing because then let's do division could get interesting. Let's throw in a little change up there. Not as long as I wanted to spend on this, but I, you know, I'm trying to get you, yeah, that's gonna mess it up. Okay, let's not do that, all right? I'm trying to get you into thinking about this differently, okay? Now, let's do one last thing, all right? Let's include C time, and let's include the C standard library, and let's just set these to be random. Okay, so I'm gonna set my random seed, okay, so srand to be time of zero. And again, if you don't remember how to do random numbers, I have a video on that, you should go back and watch that, okay? And I'm gonna set, I'm just gonna call rand here instead. And I'm still gonna modulus it by 255 so that it doesn't go over that number, but each one of these will be random, okay? So let's compile this, let's run it, let's see what we get here. Absolute chaos, right? And that's okay, it's just random, all right? But this is all there really is to writing an image, right? We just need red, green, blue values. Now that's super basic because other things like JPEGs and PNGs have maybe transparency, right? Definitely PNG has transparency. And there's, you know, way and hue and all this kind of different stuff, right? Again, we're working on the simple so that we can expand upon this, okay? All right, let's get back to our um, stuff and let's, let's look how to do filters. Okay, so we have applying filters to images, okay? So if you saw that first image that I showed you with um, the monument, that's the one that we're going to use to make some changes here. And the way I recommend doing this is to read from one file, obviously make your changes, and then write it to another, right? So we're gonna take our image.ppm, our program's gonna take that info, change it, and not save it back, we're gonna save it to a new image, okay? That way, if we completely mess up the image, we still have our original to keep doing our work with, okay? Now the first step we're gonna do is we're simply just gonna copy over the header information. So we're gonna look at this one and we're gonna go, what's the header info and boom, we're just gonna send it to the new image and then we're gonna loop through this one, make changes and save it to this one. Now we will be applying our blue filter, okay? Um, I'm choosing to use blue, but we could do this many different ways, okay? Uh, and so we're just gonna pull all the RGB values, we're gonna convert just the blue Right? Now, in order to do this, when we pull stuff from a file, 
it's more of a string, it's text, it's not an int. So we're gonna convert that string to an actual integer so we can just add a number to it and then save it back to the file, okay? Uh, and, and of course, we could do much more bigger stuff than blue, but that's for you to expand upon, okay? So let's get to our code. Let's give this a try. All right, so we're back here at our code. Uh, we are gonna be applying filters. Now the image we're gonna be using is the monument.ppm, which you can see there's also a monument.jpg, and that's because if you notice, I uncompressed it and brought it to a PPM and it went from 8.6 megabytes to 370 megabytes, which is huge, right? Uh, just gives you a little picture of how important compression really is. But I decided that we're just gonna go ahead and work with this. Might see it take a little bit of time for our program to work, but that's okay, all right? So we're gonna do this you know, pretty basic. We're not gonna really abstract things out to other functions. I just want you to see exactly how it works. So we're gonna read from the image that already exists, which is the monument image. So we're gonna use an if stream uh, and we'll just call it image. And we're going to write to a new image. So we'll use off stream and we'll just call it new image, okay? Now we're gonna need to open both of these. One of them exists, one of them doesn't yet, and that's all right. So we're gonna open image with the mon, what is a capital M, dot ppm okay and then our new image and we'll just call it new image dot ppm okay now the very first thing we need to do is copy over header information okay if we're gonna apply a filter we need to make sure we have this same amount of pixels okay so we're gonna copy it over so we're just gonna read from uh, monument and put it right into new image. Okay. Now to do this, we need some temporary uh, strings, right? So I'm going to make a string for, you know, type, which is where we'll store our, our P3, right? For width, for height, and for, you know, the RGB, you know, max. Okay. And so we're gonna do all these reads, okay? So let's read from image, okay? So we'll go image, and we're gonna, the first line, in fact, let's bring up this right here. This is uh, not the image that we had, but we can think of it this way, right? The first read gives us the P3, the second read gives us this, and it stops out of space. So then our height is our third read, and our fourth read is the RGB, okay? So we're just gonna do four reads. So I'm gonna go image type. I'm gonna go image width. I'm gonna go image height. I'm gonna go image RGB, okay? Now, let's just do a quick check here. Let's just print out, you know, let's print them all out. So I'm just gonna go type. They're all just gonna be mashed together and that's okay, just a quick verification that everything is working so far, okay? All right, let's give this a read. So G++, everything compiled good. And look, we see our P3. It's a huge image. Wow, it is a truly huge image, but everything is good, right? So our width is 8,600, our height is 3,800, our RG value is 255, everything is good there, okay? So we don't need this line anymore. Okay, but good news, we've read that header information, so let's just immediately go over and copy it to the new image, okay? So I'm gonna go new image, and I'm gonna bring all this in. So I'm gonna go type, I'm gonna go width, oh, excuse me, let's, we need new lines, right? So I'm just gonna do it separately, just so that we can have our new line and then I'm gonna go new image, I'm gonna go width with a space between height, and then do a new line, and then we'll add in our RGB. Okay, so let's, let's make sure this makes it all the way to our new file. 
Where's our, oh, we see our new image. Let's open it. Let's just open it from here so that we can see that raw data. Oh, boom, made it right in. That's good. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna read every single pixel from Monument and we're gonna add in, um, we are gonna add in a uh, filter, an addition of blue, okay? Now in order to do this, we need to loop through the entire original picture. So I'm gonna go while, all right, and I'm gonna go, all right, ready for this? Image.eof, while it is not image.eof, okay? EOF stands for end of file. Each image that you get gets a function, sorry, this is a function, so we need parentheses there, that tells you if you're at the end of the file. So if I'm at the end of the file, that would mean that this would turn to be true. Well, I need this to be true at first in order for this while loop to run, so I'm gonna set it and flip it. So if this is false, meaning I'm not at the end of the file, it flips to true, so my while loop will run until I get to the end of the file. Okay, and then we're just going to read that, add our 30 or add our, our, our uh, blue value in, and then put it into the new file. So first thing we do is we gotta read, okay? We've already read, done four reads here, okay? And because we've already done four reads, this image is ready to go on the first pixel, okay? But let's actually open that image up. Let's take a peek here. Let's open up that PPM. Yeah, it's gonna take a minute here. Oh yeah, it's gonna take a second here. Okay, the reason why I'm opening this is, you know, as you can see, they did not use new lines, okay? So what we're gonna do is every while loop, we're gonna read three. That way we read the red, the green, the blue, so that the next time the while loop goes, we can read another red, green, and blue. So we have to do three reads, okay? So I'm gonna create some arbitrary variables up top. I'm gonna go string red, blue, or green's next, sorry. Green and blue, okay? And I'm just gonna first, first pass through this while loop, I'm just gonna put the red, green, blue into those, okay? So I'm gonna go image to red, image to green, image to blue, okay? Boom, all right? Now here's the thing that I need to do next, okay? And, and here's the issues. I wanna just add a blue filter. Well, to add a blue filter, I just raise all the blue values, right? To be just a little bit higher than they were before. But the problem is this is, in a, is, a, is a string right now, okay? And that's just not gonna work. So we need to convert this string, these values here that we're pulling, which are really ints, but are kind of saved as strings right now, we need to convert those to be a um, to be an int. So let me show you how to do that. Now to accomplish this, we're going to use a class called string stream. Okay, and to include that, it's just s stream. Okay, this has an easy abstraction for us to convert these strings to int. So I'm going to create an int version. I'm going to call it int red equals zero green equals zero. In fact, wait, that's that's gonna give me an error because that's the same name, so let's just do r equals zero. g equals zero and b equals zero, okay? Now in here, I'm gonna create a string stream version of red because it allows me to convert it. So I'm gonna go string stream and I'm just gonna call it the red stream and I pass it red, okay? So I'm taking this red string here that has a number in it really, right? So this would be the first read. Where would it be at? So it'd be 193, but it's a text 193 right here. So I create a string stream for it. And then I just pass that red stream into R, which is our int version. When you do this, sorry, two carrots. When you do this, it'll convert it to an integer. So now I have an int R, okay? And we need to do this for each of them. So I'm gonna go string stream and I'm gonna go green stream. And I'm gonna go string stream, blue stream. Okay. And then I'm gonna pass them all over. So I'm gonna go green stream, G, 
blue stream B. Okay. And now I have all of these um, as I have all of these as um, as integers. Okay. And what's nice about that is now I can change the B value, right? To add a blue filter, I just need to add more blue. So I can just go like this. Well, blue plus equals 50, right? And then resave it to the new file. But what if I exceed my 255? Okay. So we're going to do a check here. I'm going to go if B plus 50 is greater than 255, then I'm just going to set B equal to 255. Okay. If it's not, right, then I will add the B is equal to 50. Okay. Now let's kind of recap what we're doing here. Okay. We pulled all the red, green, and blue, converted them to string streams, use those string streams to get to, to pass them into integers, because we know these are really ints. All right. Now I'm trying to change the blue value so that it might have it looks like I have a blue filter. I'm checking if if adding 50 to it exceeds 255. In fact, let's make this a greater than or equal to. Okay. And if it does, we just want it to be 255. If it doesn't, then we're good to add that 50. Okay. Now we've made the change to the pixels. We need to save those pixels to the new file. So new image. Okay. And we're going to bring in those that red, green, and blue. So I'm going to go, um, you know, it's R now. Right, I'm gonna put a space, then green, put a space, and then blue, and put an endel. Now I know in the, the one that we're modifying, it doesn't have a new line, but it helps us look at it really quickly if we add those new lines in, okay? So we're at the end of the while loop here. So after that while loop finishes, it would have reached the end of the file. And so we're gonna cl close each one. So close the image. And I'm going to close the new image. Okay. Now, when we give this a compile and a run, it should take a very long time. In fact, look, you can see it's still running here. You have to remember we're processing a 370 megabyte photo. Again, compression is king. But this could take a this could take a minute. Could take 30 seconds, right? Which we're, we're used to it always being instantaneous. So while that's kind of processing. I want to talk to you about why I chose blue as a filter. I think it's an easy filter to see. Okay. And I only changed just blue to add the filter. Okay. Now, if you want to do a red filter, change the red. You want to do a green filter, change the green. You want to change them all at the same time. That's okay too. Different combinations of these changes will get you certain things, but if you change them too much, for instance, what if I did this by 200, I might actually lose what my image looks like, okay? Which would obviously be a problem. And so it takes a lot of tweaking to get the filter just right. I chose 50, it's a 20% increase. I think it's enough to show us something new, but um, to not you know, overdo it, okay? Wow, this is still going. Let's see how long this takes. Ah, there we go. Okay. Let's go look at our image. All right. Hopefully everything works as advertised. We have a new image. It is a little bit bigger, which is kind of concerning. Well, oh, because we have a bunch of new lines. Uh, that would probably explain that. Because uh, this one didn't have any new lines. So look at that. Add, uh, the addition of new lines creates a bigger photo. So it's probably why you don't see those new lines. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That is a nice blue filter. So let's compare this to the, let's compare it to the original JPEG. It's a little bit easier to open. This one shouldn't take too long to open. Uh, well, let's just wait there. Okay. So look at that. You can see massive difference. Okay. But it's still retained the same exact image. Okay. And we even kind of left our blacks as as blacks and our and our whites as whites, but we added in this blue filter. So now when you're on Instagram or something like that and you add in a filter, you could see it's really not that big of a deal. Okay. Now that's all I'm gonna do here. I know this 
added in some new stuff. Okay, I know I did not abstract things away into functions. I wanted things to be kind of clear as mud, okay? Now, let's get kind of back to our thing and let's look at what your quick code is going to be or your mini lab. Okay, so you do have a mini lab. It's a little bit bigger. Um, notice how I did not put any classes in here. Um, if I put classes in, it would have really increased the difficulty of this lesson. Um, and we're not doing anything with compression. We're doing stuff with just RGB value. So I didn't want to go crazy with it. Okay. Uh, so there is no requirement to use classes. However, you will need to break things down into functions for at least the individual filter that you're applying. Okay. So what do you have to do? Your program will need five filters. You'll need at least one single color filter, which you can't do blue because I did it. You'll need one double or triple your choice color filter. So you need to change uh, you know, a red and a green or a red, a green and a blue, not just a single color. And then three other filters of your choice. Okay. Now for those three other filters of your choice, you could do more colors. You could maybe do something with a grayscale. But you know, I want you you could get creative because I showed you how to just put pixels in, right? So you could create a bigger image with a border, or you could just write over the current image with a border around the photo. Um, you could put random stuff in, you know, it, you could get crazy with it. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect photography, right? Uh, I want you to choose your own three filters, okay? Now each filter does need its own function, okay? So what I wrote was all in main. If every filter should have its own function, that function should be callable. You do not need to abstract things out further than that, but each filter should have its own function. And the user should be able to interact with your program by at least entering in the name of the image and what filter should be applied, okay? Now, when you're looking up images for this, you're gonna wanna use PPM images. You can't just use anything, okay? All right. So that's your mini lab. Uh, I hope this video wasn't too long and I hope you got it. All right. So thank you for your time and I'll see you guys next time.